Hello there everyone, this is Iron Mark 3 and I'm coming at you with a quick guide to a new addition to From the Depths. That is cluster missiles. For those of you that wish to share the joy of many many submunitions to a given favoured enemy. Yes, cluster missiles. Admittedly, this is the first version and they will be subject to changes as of the time of writing, but let's go ahead and have a look at the system and see what we can show you. In particular, how to use them, how to set them up, and some potential configurations. So, here we go. Okay, so what is the custom missile system? Well, in its current implementation, you might think of it as a missile teleportation system. Yes, I wish I was joking. No, um, as it is right now, you need to configure your launch pad with a missile which will act as the cluster missile itself, and you need to preload the launch pad with the munitions which you will be sending with the missile. This actually has to be set up um, ahead of time because when the cluster missile actually fires the um, sub-missiles, they teleport from the launcher to the location of the actual missile itself. Let's show you what that looks like. This is the launcher that I was using in the intro. Off they go and watch the small missiles. Yeah, look at that. They all disappeared. I do hope they change this and actually um, preload the missile when you launch it. But right now, that is just how these things operate. So, let us begin by actually looking at the three missile parts which were included in this particular uh, piece, which I've got set up here. Uh, first off, they all don't have any kind of custom graphics. They do count as separate blocks, but they share the graphic for the reinforced body. Uh, also, I should note um, right now, in terms of pricing, they cost as much as a standard missile segment, which limits the usability of them at the moment to very specific circumstances. But there are plans to change the price of the uh, missile parts themselves going forward. Uh, the cluster missile parts, I mean, not the actual regular ones. And I hope they do, because right now they are actually punishing you in terms of extra ammunition use for basically wasted payload space. Right. So the first part we've got is a bit of an odd one. A cluster container controller. You need one of these on your cluster missile, and only one. And it will add um, a length and a volume, but um, from there we expand it. Unfortunately, to get full functionality out of the cluster container controller, we need to actually expand that with extensions anyway. So, let's quickly touch on that one. The counterpart to the container controller is the container extension. By itself, it does absolutely nothing. And honestly, it needs to be the cheapest of the three parts, I think. Because all it is, really, is empty space with a little bit of metal wrapped around it. That's all there is to it. It does absolutely nothing by itself. Lastly, this is how you want to set them out. You want a container controller, and then next to it, this can be in either direction by the way, is the extension pieces which increases the container length and the container volume. These are the two stats which determine what kind of missile you can actually pack into your cluster missile. A, um, a missile has to be um, the same length as the container, or less, so you can pack more in, but the length determines the maximum size of the missile you can fire, and then the volume is dictated by, uh, well, it's slightly less than the volume of the block itself, but it is used up for all submunitions if they meet the required length. So you can just extend the missile and pack more and more submissiles into it. That's kind of how it works. Now, moving on. The controller by itself, as you saw a moment ago, has two settings to start out, which is distance to target and distance to target smart. After that, every extension you add to it adds an extra option. The first one adds release after flight time. The second one adds drop stagger. And then the third one adds size difference. So doing that adds manual controls to the missile. Any further extensions don't add anything. 
So, what do these do? Distance to targets. This is distance from the missile to its intended target. A small note is, um, this uses the normal distance to target calculation, which is center of mass of the target in question. So if you're firing at a big target, you might want to adjust this appropriately to compensate. Err on the side of caution, launch your submunitions early. Because if your lead missile, it's, it still functions as a missile, by the way, hits the target, it won't be able to launch any further small missiles, and so the cluster missile will be even less ammo efficient. But yeah. So, that one configures distance to target center of mass. This one is um, smart, so if the cluster missile starts to be outran by the, um, by the target, then it will launch automatically. Though, as you can see, it begins release procedure if the target range is lower than this value, but is increasing. So, if the target starts to outpace the missile, this can fire off the submunitions anyway. The third option, unlocked with one extension, is release after flight time. This can be a fail-safe, like um, if the cluster missile itself is about to expire, then it can fire off its submunitions, and hopefully they'll still be able to reach the target and do something. But um, honestly, this is a bit of an odd option, and eh. if the missile expires, then it doesn't cost you the ammo to fire the submunitions as it stands as the missile teleports it. So honestly, it would be cheaper if you just let the missile expire by itself. The fourth option, unlocked with two extensions, is the drop stagger. This allows you to set in increments of 0.05 seconds, and allows you to set it so it doesn't just drop all missiles at once, and instead spaces them out. This can be set to quite a long time, as you can see, up to two seconds between missiles. Just bear in mind that as you do this, the the cluster missile itself will still be charging at the target, so where you set this depends entirely on the submunitions and what kind of payloads they are carrying. Oh dear. One small note, by the way, is missiles will just, they just pop in around the missile controller and extensions. So if there's too many missiles, they will do a collision on each other and they will scatter all over the place to the far ends of the Earth. So it can be very beneficial to stagger them as you launch them just to avoid that happening. There is plans currently uh, being tested by the devs to you know to add a dispersal though my personal hope is they actually add another setting for that which allows you to determine how aggressively they eject from the missile. That was the um, what the devs said. They are going to treat it kind of like an ejector system or at least that's what they were thinking about. Yes. Anyway moving on the final setting size difference. By default, it comes at setting 3, which is size difference um, 3 levels below. So, this is basically any kind of sub-missile mounted to the same launcher will be fitted if it will fit. So, large to large, medium to small, medium to medium, and small. Then you can take fine control of this. So, setting 2, 2 levels below, la large will still do large, medium, small, mediums will do medium, small. So, honestly, there's not really that much difference there. I'm kind of curious as to why there is a, an anything goes and then it's like you can use basically anything below you anyway. Unless they're planning to include more missile sizes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay. Size difference one level below. Larges will launch medium missiles. Mediums will launch small missiles. By the way, the sub-missiles, they can be cluster missiles themselves. So large missiles can fire medium missiles and then medium missiles can fire small missiles. I actually have a test configuration set up to show you that later. And then lastly, same level only. So large missiles will fire large munitions, mediums, mediums, small, smalls. One small note here, um, the volume, as I mentioned earlier, it isn't quite the full volume given for the part. So you will need to have extra extension pieces to actually allow you to carry a missile of the same weight class than you would normally. So yeah, moving on. The final piece is the one required for all cluster munitions. That is the cluster munition ejector piece. And honestly, this is the piece which uh, I am happy with being at its uh, current price. Maybe increase the internal volume slightly on it, but that's okay. And that's why I think it's okay at its current price point. It acts just like any kind of additional control systems, like the APNs, 
the uh, target prediction, that kind of thing. As in, it gives free internal volume to the missile. This is, means that space is actually used for something, unlike the other two pieces. But just like usual, fuel, reinforcement, whatever you want to set the extra space for. Back to the controllers for a quick second here. First off, you'll notice the cluster launching set of uh, details that appear for it. You actually have to add the parts, then come out of the missile customizer, then go back into the customizer before it actually gives you these stats, which is a slight UI problem at the moment. So you do need to do that to actually get the stats up. If they don't appear, don't panic. Just go back out, come back in. Um, I also really hope that they give more details and options, like uh, what I would like is if the controller would actually give us a drop-down box in the system, which lists any unique missile patterns in the actual system itself, which will fit within the container, how much space they take, and allows you to actually manually set how many cluster missiles to throw into it. So that's my personal hope for the UI. It doesn't do that. So, yeah. The reason I mention this, though, is because you can calculate it, because you get the length required, so that's the minimum length of the container, and the volume required when you look at the submunition, and then you've got the container volume when you check on the actual cluster missile itself. The problem is, this requires you to do maths, and it's... <sighs> yeah, it's a thing. So, a quick reference you can do. These small missiles are one meter each. So, to fit just under four of them, you want to have one meter's worth in here, which is in this case one controller and one extension because the medium missile fits two modules in each piece. Then, of course, add one extra module just to give extra volume and extra payload space to make it a bit more efficient. And then scale up from there. After all, it, it still applies that one small missile is worth... Sorry, one large missile is worth four mediums, one medium is worth four smalls. There is just that slight penalty because you're using cluster munitions. Okay, so we have touched on adding uh, submunitions, adding the parts, what the parts do. All that's left is some potential configurations and potential uses. Um, right now, because of their cost, I recommend that you think of a cluster missile more as a delivery system. As in, it delivers the missiles to the target's vicinity, and then those missiles are what you want to be actually doing the work. This can do things like get small missiles to distant ships, because the small missiles would usually run out of fuel on the way, or they burn a lot of fuel to get there. Pack them into a cluster missile, they probably work okay. Cluster missiles are also more resistant to incoming anti-missile fire as well, which can help an absolute ton. Especially since small missiles tend to get taken out by AoE attacks like flak and uh, anti-missile missiles and th that kind of thing. So that's also stuff worth bearing in mind. Now, examples. This is one configured for what I mentioned. It's, uh, this large missile fires the medium missiles. The medium missiles fire the small missiles. All you have to do is combine the parts. So here's the basic settings. Turn cluster, radar, blah, blah, nothing exceptional here. So that. Then the mediums are set up with both the munition ejector and controller. So the controller itself is large enough to handle some of these smaller missiles, because of course it has its own internal volume. The ejector means that this thing can be fitted into another missile as a cluster part. Another quick note on the UI, by the way, is I really hope they change it so that a missile which has a ejector in it is not counted as a ready to fire weapon in the UI at the bottom left, because you can't actually fire it. It waits on its uh, cluster missile to do that, so it technically it's not ready to fire. As you can see, there go the medium missiles firing out to large, and because the range is such, the medium missiles are already firing their small missile companions. And off they all go. As a quick side note here, by the way, um, rockets are also perfectly viable right now because uh, no ejection happens. They do require the uh, cluster missile to actually be lined up on the target. 
but uh, if they are lined up properly then rockets work just fine. This is a, one potential use for the cluster missile system. Just get it lined up properly and then it throws rockets at the target. Quite useful. So that was that. The next one is a torpedo system, which actually uses a stat I forgot to cover <laughs> when I was going through the things. I apologise for that, so here we go. Right, Munition Ejector has its own control stat called Speed Inheritance. This is the percentage of the uh, cluster missile's speed that the new missile will take onto itself when it is teleported to the cluster missile. So you can set it to match the speed and then it'll fire its own thruster and do its own thing. Or you can tell it to appear at a dead stop, in which case it just drops downwards or does whatever it's trying to do before it takes a flight on its own. This one uses that system because this particular missile here is a combination effect missile. The cluster missile itself carries, as you can see, fragmentation warhead, but when it gets close to a target it also carries explosive torpedoes, which it then uses just to extend an extra bit of damage to the targets. As you can see, there we go, it just dropped a trail of torpedoes. The frag missile's already gone and impacted, but the torpedoes are then coming in for some extra attacks down at the bottom. And one apparently missed. <laughs> the uh, usual rules for explosive missiles does still apply. Next up is another example. This one is just to showcase, as I mentioned, like you can fit the same size missile into its itself, basically. So missile section there. This one is it's a lot harder to do because of the size restrictions and things on the cluster missile itself. But this one is a regular cluster missile, remote guidance, fins, yada yada. And it carries two medium-sized explosive mines. So that is another use for these particular guys. Just to use it to drop mines around enemy ships and submarines and watch the fireworks unfold. Even better, you can use the internal space for high explosive and... That can help a lot, honestly, with this thing. Right, off it goes. And it drops the mines. They had um, some velocity reduction, but um, now they're there to go. And in they go to do booms. That Marauder is indestructible, by the way, but the damage stats say that that attack did 29,000 explosive damage, so, you know, it can be quite effective. As a note on mines, by the way, you want to set the start time as low as you can, which is 3 seconds. Also, you want to turn the arming delay down because it might launch really close to the target and just slam into it instead. So, if it does that, you kind of want it to still go off. Increasing the magnet range doesn't hurt either. Okay, here's another potential use for using a cluster missile. This is a good old regular explosive missile. So far, so standard, right? Well, not quite. This one has additional deterrence to kind of draw the enemy's attention and potentially distract incoming anti-missile fire because it carries the cluster system and that is fitted with flares and radar target simulators. So this guy, well, it's going to be a little bit trickier to try and shoot down. And that's another use for the cluster missiles. Any sub-missiles will also have to be shot at by the enemy's anti-missile system. So potentially you can saturate it and help break through such defences. Off it goes. And there go the flares to try and distract things. And the missile itself still impacts reasonably hard. If only it didn't quite cost so much. Okay, this next one is one that's potentially fairly useful. Though how useful it will be depends on how you set it up. This is a large missile system, carrying a large explosion, of course. So far, so standard. But what it uses is a saturation attack of fragmentation rockets, which it fires rapid fire at close range. The idea behind this one is it will weaken and put maybe even punch through the armor of a target ship and then the missile behind it will be able to hit that damaged area and potentially allow the explosive damage to get in and hit the more sensitive systems behind the armor or at least do more damage because the armor is thinner thanks to the rocket strike so yeah 
combining two different types of weapon to hopefully do something, especially since the rockets will be firing straight ahead from the missile as it comes in. Here it comes, and rocket strike! And then the missile straight behind it. As you see, 37,000 kinetic, 50,000 explosive, and a few thousand thump damage from that one. As I said, the cluster missile still counts as a fully functional missile, so that is worth keeping in mind. Okay, and this last demonstration missile I have to show you is a pure cluster missile. The main missile itself will do a little bit of thump damage when it gets there, but it's not really meant to do that, it's just meant to act as a carrier. So this missile in particular, until they change the prices, is going to be price inefficient. But it's potentially useful and it's kind of fun, honestly. It is carrying basic magnet mines, as you saw on the medium mines, but this one carries the small versions and it carries more. For a fun time, get a large missile and pack it with lots and lots of small mines. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's something else to behold. But in this case, I'm just demonstrating the system. So, lots of payload space, basic rocket setup. That's all it needs, really. Okay, we should be getting close to ignition. Yep, here we go. As you can see, the mines are teleporting in around the missile. And there are a lot of them. These guys also keep the momentum from the, the um, cluster missile itself. So they are set to release a little bit early. But hey, they're still going to do fun things. There goes the missile itself, and here come the mines. As you can see, they suffer from explosions throwing them around a bit as well, but they've got strong magnets, so they'll be okay. So yeah, that is my tutorial on the cluster missile system. It's definitely got some fun to it, and if you like saturation things, then by all means give it a try. See what you can work out with it. I just hope that very much so that they reduce the price of the container systems to a lot less than they are right now, because right now it just penalises you for using them. And they also hope they change the UI system. Some more order. Your time has come. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this guide has helped you guys out, and I'll catch you all some other time. See you all later. Well, you didn't think I'd let them aboard a live after all that, did you?